Good evening, everybody. It is 6.30, and my cat is pants the fuck out. She looks comfortable as hell, and she has the right idea. And I was thinking about working some more, but God is telling me to be smart, stay in routine, but he's got my back. We got the carpet out, not all of it. I know where my razor blade is, but it's dull. So I need to get more razor blades and you don't want to use a dull razor blade. That's how you hurt yourself. You want a sharp one. So we are going to nap and stay in routine. I'm going to read, get comfortable and sleep between. I'm trying to always keep routine between 6.30, 7. Try to get to bed between, because uh, you know what's gonna be different. Be between 6.30, 6 and 8 is my window to get to bed, you know what I mean? And then from that time to 10 to 12, you know what I'm saying, is my window. Or that's my windows, you know what I mean? I gotta get rest. And then I gotta get up, check stuff, check the boat, look at the sky, take pictures. You guys are gonna be getting all these photos, all these, all this video footage. You know, I'm going to have some nice stuff for everyone. As I'm sailing, you guys can tell me. Like, you guys will be able to pick ports and stuff. I'll be able to... I'm going to be giving you guys options what ports you guys want me to sail to next. That type of stuff here and there, you know. Not all the time, but... Here and there. So, I told Bill not to worry about the shell. He'd be worrying about the wrong stuff, man. You know... All the stuff, yeah, I'm leaving all those tools. I'm not bringing all those tools with me, man. I'm getting all new stuff. I don't want to look at all that stuff. It has bad, it has negative energy on it. It's all tied to my family. I don't want none of that stuff with me. They can, if they're thinking about it, right? They're bringing negative energy. There's a pole on it. It's keeping me from moving forward. Healing. It's the truth. Um, we're good. That window can stay. I ain't worried about anybody climbing through that window. They'll get shot. I usually close this window, but this window's fine. We are going to turn on the fan, though. <clears throat> I've been napping here because I got all those blankets. I mean, all, all those clothes on my bed. I've just been sleeping like this, man. Because in my knee, I got that five screws in my knee. I like to rush it sometimes. And on this couch, I've just been doing this, man. Seriously, I've been laying like this. Just, bro, just like this. And my legs up. I've been waking up with her fucking my cat buried in here. She's been going in between here. I'll be out like this. She's, she's upside down with her paws up like this. It's, it's the most amazing thing. So yeah, this is what we're about to do. We're about to roll a joint in a second. We're going to read the Bible, my favorite thing to do in the world. Which, oh, there it is. I gotta get comfortable. We're gonna find, I wanna get all out of these clothes. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Uh. All right, I can go up there for now. I'm gonna light this puppy, hit this a couple of times. Listen, my boy hooked me up, man. Not only did he give me all that shake, right? I still got a quarter of another bag of weed he gave me too that was all bud. He gave me a quarter of fucking bud. Not only did he give me an eighth, right? He gave me a quarter of bud and he gave me fucking two ounces of shake. And I'm talking about real shake, not fucking trim, okay? <laughs> and he fucking gave that all to me for 20 bucks. Listen, man, that's called respect right there. It's not because I had the camera on or because fucking, you know, all this shit's going on. No, that's because he's seen me. He hasn't seen me in a long time. And fucking, we were cool like that. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, I, I ain't done, never done nothing ho to anybody of any of my friends. 
or my girlfriends. I ain't never fucked them over. They were just all fucked up in their own head. Stupid. Oops. I don't know what I want to wear. Yeah, these fucking, these boxers on. Fucking no, right? Uh, these are the boxers I prefer to wear. These ones, these ones are so much better than the fucking briefs. I can't stand those briefs. They pull up on my nutsack and all that shit too much. I'm looking for a pair of shorts or something. Doesn't help I'm not digging through it with my hand. I just want something comfortable, bro, you know? I love black. Most of my wardrobe is black. I buy mostly black clothes. That's just how I am. Which, I know I got some fucking Jordan shorts, some, some fucking dry fit, some around here. Early anything, come on. <laughs> I think I found some by now. Here's, here's a clean beater. We'll take that. I mean, I don't feel like putting that on right now. I don't want pants. I dropped a sock. A weed sock. There we go. I'll put these on. I like these shorts, too. They stay cooler. They're light. These things are nice. These Hurley shorts. They're like swim trunks, but they're not. They don't have no lining. They're just Hurley Large, Hurley, Hurley International. Placentia. Yeah, Placentia Avenue. Costa Mesa, California. Made in Bangladesh, India. So mostly all, most of your clothes are dyed there in India. I mentioned that in many videos. Which uh, shit's fucked up over there. You should see the documentaries they have over there on like Vice News and all that shit. Shit's crazy. It blows my mind. Uh. Oh, man. Alright, we are going to relax. After a little joint. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna head a ball. I just hit that. I rolled the joint not too long ago. Weed, more weed. Weed just everywhere. Ain't nothing like fucking some people are known. Alright. I just wanted to get a good bong token with weed. And then I'm gonna sleep until I wake up, which should be about. Uh, it's about 7 o'clock. It's almost 7 o'clock. It'll probably be about 10, 10 30. I'm like, a lot of times I wake up at 9, 9.30, but I just lay there, you know? That's usually what happens for the most part. I don't get up and want to get motivated until about 10, 10.30. I've been slacking, get, keeping my routine. I've been, I've been trying to fucking work, work, work. But I have a month. It's gonna go by fast, watch, you'll see. It's gonna fly by. I'm not, I, I'll have this motor in there. Just gotta bust my ass off. That's why I wanna get Ross. That's why I recouped last night too. I got a month to you know really bust my ass off and figure things out. So that's why I want to spend time with God because Listen, man, there's only so much time in the day. If it's not, dude, if it wasn't for God, none of our, and nobody would have what they have already anyways. You wouldn't even be here. People don't realize how much they're reliant on God without being reliant on God. It's funny. I watch it. They'll say, they'll talk about God, this, every other word, you know, they'll say God, but they don't, they don't have a relationship with him. They say they believe in him, but they don't, they don't believe in him. How I know they don't believe in them because they don't have no faith. And they snitch on people and they lie. I 
That's my whole family. All of them, every single one of them. Even my grandmother, my uncle, all of them. It's crazy. Everyone lies. The Bible clearly teaches that everyone needs a savior. Everyone cannot follow the Ten Commandments. That's not possible. Stupid me. Bitch. Time to oh smoky smoko. Get, read the Bible or get get some rust. I had a bowl of cereal, so I ate KFC a KFC famous bowl. I ate that noodle right after. Um, I had a bowl of cereal right after that, about half an hour after that, and then I had two lemons. I uh, drank two lemons, so. Which my head fog is finally going away. It's kind of nice. When I get more money, once I get this truck running and I get on the road, we get out of here, I get all this stuff packed up. I get in the boat and stuff. I start putting, making my list of everything we need. And I'll start showing you guys my diet, my real diet, the diet that I actually like to eat when I can actually purchase the food I want to purchase. Right now I'm kind of skimping out on being cheap because, you know, I'm starting this, you know, YouTube and everything else. I quit my career to do all this, you know. Um, and I don't, the money that I have is only for the boat, so I'm living off, basically I'm surviving, I have to survive every day and find a way to get money for food every day, you know what I mean? I gotta find a way to get bills every day without actually physically really working in a sense. This is what I'm showing everybody, it's, that's what, it's where everybody gives up trying to build a business is they don't know how to do this. They don't know how to rely on God and work with God and God's grace. So they start tearing shit up. They start stealing. They start fucking, you know what I mean? Start doing shit the wrong way and blaming everyone else for it, which is what I did. And then when I, that's what I'm talking about years ago, <laughs> a long time ago. And then, you know, I accepted the truth. And then now, you know, this past decade, I, you know, Nobody, everybody, my family, everyone, you know, I try to make it work with my dad. I try to make it with my family, nothing. My dad was the last one to try to make it work with. And that was recently. So I'm done. Cut. We're gone. I have no ties. That's why I'm also, you know, leaving. I'm going on a boat. I have no, it doesn't hurt me to leave again. You know what I'm saying? Before when I traveled, it hurt. You know what I mean? Like, cause I always had a thought in my mind that, I had to be with my family, which was a complete lie. It was just the evil one playing in my head. Just like I, you know, like I didn't really want to fully give my life up completely to Jesus either until, you know, my dad showed me his true colors. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I had a relationship with Jesus. I talked to him every day, but I wasn't, it wasn't until I seen what he did to, my my fiance and who I loved and everyone else and this man said that he loved me all you gotta do is listen to that video I posted on my Facebook by ND Champ no one is loyal there's no loyalty no such thing as loyalty so the only one that's loyal is God They'll never switch up on you. It's why I spend so much time with them. It's why I can't wait to get off the fucking camera and spend time with them and thank him for what he's provided me today. You know, um, rest, you know, rest in his arms on the couch and, you know, and I'll get up, I'll, you know, I'll do yoga and spend time with him, like candles, all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll turn back on the camera. Uh, right. Time spent in Dot's waiting room. It's 
says, chapter 30, at that time Ezekiel got sick, he was about to die. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, visited him and said, God says, prepare, prepare your affairs and your family, this is it. You're going to die, you're not going to get well. Ezekiel turned away from Isaiah, facing the wall, prayed to God, God, please, I beg you, remember how I've lived my life. I've lived it faithfully in your presence, lived out of a heart that was totally yours. You've seen how I've lived, the good that I have done. And Ezekiel wept as he prayed, painful tears. Then God told Isaiah, go and speak with Ezekiel. Give him this message from me. God, the God of your ancestor David, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Here's what I'll do. I'll add 15 years to your life, and I'll save both you and the city from the king of Assyria. I'll have my hand on the city. And this is your confirming sign, confirming that I, God, will do exactly what I have promised. Watch for this. As the sun goes down and the shadow lengthens on the sundial of Ahaz, I'm going to reverse the shadow ten notches on the dial, and that's what happened. The declining sun's shadow reversed ten notches on the dial. It says, this is what Hezekiah, king of Judah, wrote after he'd been sick and then recovered from his sickness. In the very prime of life, I have to leave. Whatever time I have left is spent in death's waiting room. No more glimpses of God in the land of the living. No more meetings with my neighbors. No more rubbing shoulders with friends. This body I inhabit is taken down and packed away like a camper's tent. Like a weaver, I've rolled up the carpet of my life. As God cuts me from, as, as God cuts me free of the loom, and at day's end sweeps up the scraps and pieces, I cry for help until morning. Like a lion, God pummels and pounds me, relentlessly finishing me off. I squawk like a doomed hen, moan like a dove. My eyes ache from looking up for help. Master, I'm in trouble. Get me out of this. But what's the use? God himself gave me the word. He's done it to me. I can't sleep. I'm that upset, that troubled. Oh, master, these are the conditions in which people live. And yes, in these very conditions, my spirit is still alive, fully recovered with a fresh infusion of life. It seems it was good for me to go through all those troubles. Throughout them, all you held tight to my lifeline. This says, throughout them, all you, all you held tight to my Lifeline, you never let me tumble over the edge into nothing, but my sins you let go of. Threw them over your shoulder, good riddance. The dead don't thank you, and choirs don't sing praises from the morgue. Those buried six feet under don't witness to your faithful ways. It's the living, live men, live women who thank you, just as I'm doing right now. Parents give their children full reports on your faithful ways. God saves and will save me. As fiddles and mandolins strike up the tunes, we'll sing, oh, we'll sing, sing, for the rest of our lives in the sanctuary of God. Isaiah had said, Prepare a poultice of figs and put it on the boil so he may recover. Hezekiah had said, What is my cue that is that it's all right to enter again in the sanctuary of God? And then uh, chapter 39, There will be nothing left. So sometime later, King Merodach Balor, Baladin, son of Baladin of Babylon, sent messengers with greetings and a gift to Hezekiah. He had heard that Hezekiah had been sick and was now well. Uh, so Hezekiah received the messengers warmly. He took them on a tour of his royal precincts, proudly showing them all his treasures, silver, gold, spices, expensive oils, all his weapons, everything out on display. There was nothing in his house or kingdom that Hezekiah didn't show them. Later, the prophet Isaiah showed up. He asked Ezekiel, what were these men up to? What did they say, and where did they come from? Ezekiel said, they came from a long way off, from Babylon. And what did they see in your palace? Everything, said Ezekiel. I showed them the works, opened all the doors, and oppressed them with it all. Then Isaiah said to Ezekiel, now listen to this message from God of the angel armies. I have to warn you. The time is coming when everything in this palace, along with everything your ancestors accumulated before you, will be hauled off to Babylon. God says that there will be nothing left, nothing, and not only your things, but your sons. Some of your sons will be taken into exile, ending up as eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Hezekiah replied to Isaiah, good, if God says so, good. Within himself, he was thinking, 
but surely nothing bad will happen in my lifetime. I'll enjoy peace and stability as long as I live. It says, messengers of comfort. It's kind of fucked up that he said, yeah, I don't give a fuck what happens to my kids. And whatever. He, but, you know, he was a, at least he was, a, he, he accepted, you know what I mean? He was willing to live his life the way he wanted to live it and be acceptive of, you know, the outcome of it. You got to watch out for those people. It says, uh, messengers of comfort. It says, uh, prepare for God's arrival. It says, comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem, but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the valleys, level off the hills, smooth out the ruts, clear out the rocks. Then God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God, is, just as God has said. I have to piss and it's bothering me. It's making me itch trying to hold it and all that other shit. Sorry about that. That was bad. I drank all that fucking lemon juice. I've been drinking coffee. It would piss me off. I didn't even pee that much. And then it took forever. Alright. So thunder in the desert. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the world straight and smooth. A highway fit for God. Fill in the valleys. Level off the hills. Smooth out the I said smooth out the ruts. Clear out the rocks. And God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God had said, a voice, a voice says, shout. I said, what shall I shout? It says, these people are nothing but grass. Their love fragile as wildflowers. The grass withers, the wildflowers fade. If God so much as puffs on them, aren't these people just so much grass? It says, aren't these people just so much grass? True, the grass withers and the wildflowers fade but our God's word stands firm and forever. Climb a high, it says, climb a, high, climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of good news. Raise your voice, make it good and loud, Jerusalem. You're the preacher of good news. Speak loud and clear, don't be timid. Tell the cities of Judah, look, your God, look at him. God, the master, comes in power, ready to go into action. He's going to pay back his enemies and reward those who have loved him. Like a shepherd, he will care for his flock gathering the lambs in his arms, hugging them as he carries them, leading the nursing ewes to good pasture. See, I, so if people ever says that uh, you don't color in your Bible, I color in it. I painted it silver and fucking copper. That's real fucking copper and fucking like silver flake. It was a really expensive can. Um... I write in my Bible, all that stuff, okay? Don't ever think that you can. It says, the creator of all you can see or you imagine. It says, who has scooped up the ocean in his two hands or measured the sky between his thumb and little finger? Who has put all the earth's dirt in one of his baskets, weighed each mountain and hill? Who could ever have told God what to do or taught him his business? What expert would he have gone to or for advice? What school would he attend to learn justice? It says, what God do you suppose might have taught him what he knows, showed him how things work? Why? The nations are but a drop in a bucket, a mere smudge on a window. Watch him sweep up the islands like so much dust off the floor. There aren't enough trees in Lebanon nor enough animals in those vast forests to furnish adequate fuel and offerings for his worship. All the nations adds up to simply nothing before him. Less than nothing is more like it, a minus. So who even comes close to being like God?
To whom or what can you compare him? Some no god idol? Ridiculous. It's made in a workshop, cast in bronze, given a thin veneer of gold and draped with silver filigree. Or perhaps someone will still lock to find wood, uh, olive wood, say, that won't rot. Then hire a wood carver to make a no god, giving special care to its base so it won't tip over. Have you not been paying attention? Have you not been listening? Have you heard these stories all your life? Don't you understand the foundation of all things? God sits high above the round ball of earth. The people look like mere ants. He stretches out the skies like a canvas. Yes, like a tent canvas to live under. He ignores what all the princes say and do. The rulers of the earth can't count for nothing. Princes and rulers don't amount to much. Like seeds barely rooted, just sprouted. They shrivel when God blows on them. Like flecks of chaff, they're gone in the wind. So who is like me? Who holds a candle to me, says the holy? Look at the night skies. Who do you think made all this? Who marches this army of stars out each night? Counts them off, calls each by name. So magnificent, so magnificent, so powerful, and never, o look, never overlooks a single one. Why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or Ryan, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out, doesn't pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts. For even young people tire and drop out. The young folk in their prime stumble and fall, but those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. It says, do you feel like a lowly worm? Quiet down, far-flung ocean islands. Listen, sit down and rest, everyone. Recover your strength. Gather around me. Say what's on your heart. Together, let's decide what's right. Who got things rolling here? Get this champion from the east on the move. Who recruited, it says, who recruited him for this job that rounded up and corralled the nations so he could run roughshod over kings? He's off and running, pulverizing nations into dust leaving only stubble and chaff in his wake. He chases them and comes to him unscathed, his feet scarcely touching the path. Who did this? Who made it happen? Who always gets things started? I did. God, I'm the first on the scene. I'm also the last to leave. Far-flung ocean, island, sea, and panic. The ends of the earth are shaken. Fearfully, they huddle together. They try to help each other out, making up stories in the dark. The god makers in the workshops go into overtime production, crafting new models of no gods, urging one another on, good job, great design, pounding in nails at the base so that things won't tip over. But you, Israel, are my servant, you, you're Jacob, my first choice, descendants of my good friend Abraham. I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you you're my servant, serving on my side. I've picked you, I haven't dropped you. Don't panic, I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I'll give you strength, I'll help you. I'll, I'll hold you steady, keep a firm grip on you. It says, count on it. Everyone who handed in for you will end up out on the cold. Real losers. Those who worked against you will end up empty-handed. Nothing to show for their lives. When you go out looking for your old adversaries, you won't find them. Not a trace of your old enemies, not even a memory. That's right, because I, your God, have a firm grip on you, and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. Don't you feel like a lowly worm, Jacob? Don't you? Don't be afraid. Feel like a fragile insect, Israel? I'll help you. I, God, want to reassure you, the God who buys you back, the Holy of Israel, I'm transforming you from worm to hero, from insect to iron. As sharp-toothed hero, you'll smooth out the mountains, turn those tough old hills into loamy soil. You'll open the rough ground to the weather, to the blasts of sun and wind and rain. You'll be confident and exuberant, expansive in the holy of Israel. The poor and homeless are desperate for water. Their tongues parch and no water to be found. But I'm there to be found, I'm there for them. And I, God of Israel, will not leave them thirsty. I'll open up rivers for them on the barren hills, spout fountains in the valleys. I'll turn the baked clay badlands into a cool pond, the waterless waste into splashing creeks. I'll plant the red cedar in that treeless wasteland, also lasacea, myrtle, and olive. I'll place the cypress in the desert with plenty of oaks and pines. 
Everyone will see this. No one can miss it. Unavoidable, indisputable evidence that I, God, personally did this. It's created and signed by the Holy of Israel. It says, set out your case for your God, says God. It says, set your case, it says, set out your case for your God, says God. Bring your evidence, says the King of Jacob. Take the stand on behalf of your idols. Offer arguments. Assemble reasons. Spread out the facts before us so that we can assess them ourselves. Ask them if our, if you are gods, explain what the past means. Or feeling that, tell us what will happen in the future. Can't do that? How about doing something, anything, good or bad, whatever? Can you hurt us or help us? Do we need to be afraid? They say nothing because they are nothing. Sham gods, no gods, fool-making gods. I, God, started something out from... It says, I, God, started... It says, I, God, started someone out from the north and he's come. He, he was called out of the east by name. He'll stomp the rulers into the mud. The way a potter works the clay, let me ask you... Did anyone guess that this might happen? Did anyone tell us earlier so we might confirm it? With yes, he's right. No one mentioned it. No one announced it. No one heard a peep out of you. But I told Zion all about this beforehand. I gave Jerusalem a preacher of good news. But around here, there's no one. No one who knows what is going on. I ask, but no one can tell me the score. Nothing here. It's all smoke and hot air. Sham gods, hollow gods, and no gods. And then it says, uh, chapter 42, God's servant will set everything right. We're going to leave it right there. We'll go off. We'll set off from there. I'm going to get some rest. So I'll see you guys uh, a couple hours later tonight, you know, after midnight, something like that. I hope you all have a good day, man. Take care. Hopefully, you know, we'll have something good tonight. Do some computer stuff. I got to get some razor blades or find some razor blades to rest that carpet out. That guy I never called on Facebook Marketplace. I got a bunch of... My phone was going off and shit, too, so... Um, I don't see anything. It looks like I'm logged in here. It doesn't look like anything. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get some rest. See what tomorrow brings, you know, tonight. God bless you all.